Uh, hello, everybody. I want to introduce our work uh, that we've done uh, with nitrogen. Uh, we have a company. We are doing a lot of uh, uh, full-stack Erlang projects. And of course, for web, we are, uh, we are using Erlang also. And uh, nitrogen was our choice. And uh, this is an evolution of, uh, of the nitrogen, and I want to uh, describe uh, the landscape of uh, the possibilities of uh, web uh, in Erlang platform. So I want to start about, uh, uh, about Erlang web and uh, uh, what, what, what we have possibilities to, uh, to, to create the web application. Uh, I prepared a classification of all uh, web frameworks that exist on the market, and I, now I want to describe this landscape. Uh, uh, let's start from the very teeny web frameworks that actually nothing uh, uh, besides uh, the REST uh, API for, for the da to, to the database. You know that uh, we have uh, a Python, Flask, Ruby, Sinatra, PHP, Silex, and Scalatra. This is a very small, the so-called micro REST, because it provides nothing to you to develop the web pages. It's only uh, provide you a REST API, and uh, you should plug uh, single page applications on top of that API to provide the uh, web applications to the end user. We also have uh, a class of uh, web frameworks called concurrency and mining applications. You know that uh, it's a problem uh, beyond the Erlang world that uh, uh, with capacity of even in Ruby and PHP and this, 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 these guys took lib event libraries and plugged to their frameworks to uh, to, to have an ability for eventing, for scale, scalability. This is uh, like uh, tricks, and, uh, except Java, because Java is uh, more robust than these dynamic languages. So, of course, in Erlang, we should not take care about it, because we, ha we have everything out of the box, because Erlang is very powerful in that area. So, this is a most modern way to develop the web applications. Uh, it's connected with the micro REST frameworks. So you, with yellow color, you, this is a high level JavaScript web frameworks that provide you not only the rendering possibilities, not only the pops up uh, subsystems for your control elements, but also uh, like Chaplin branches, the overall uh, assembling uh, specification for your application, how to assemble the assets, the JavaScript, CSS, uh, images, etc. Also, uh, if you want your application to be more light, uh, more lightweight, you could use uh, React.js, uh, which is nice Facebook uh, framework for for view. For uh, it could even replace jQuery. You don't need to use jQuery if you are using React.js. Uh, we have also well-known Backbone, Knockout, and uh, Loic will show you how to develop uh, today, how to develop the uh, web applications using D3 on top of WebSockets and Cowboy. So we have uh, these options in uh, JavaScript, and uh, we have a separate, I called it class functional DSL languages, uh, web languages. It's uh, uh, th using this approach, you you create a web applications on using on your domain language. For example, uh, if you are using Scala, Scala uh, you're using Lyft, and you specifying your application in terms of uh, control elements of DOM elements, uh, and you create the page in 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 Scala, and it's rendered. Uh, on the uh, server to the HTML and JavaScript and pushed back to the client. All these uh, web frameworks uh, are very similar. Uh, 
or camel ox again the same. You are specifying the web page not in HTML, not in uh, not using uh, templates, but uh, using uh, or camel language, and this uh, is being rendered on the server and pushed back to the client. So the web uh, web sharp on F sharp Haskell base HTML. On Haskell, actually, you have a lot of uh, choices to create the web applications. Uh, Blaze HTML is just an example. So, uh, and uh, in Erlang, we have a nitrogen because nitrogen was uh, uh, it, it was the first framework that introduced the DOM elements in terms of Erlang records because. Uh, using, if we are using Erlang, we should develop the pages with Erlang records because Erlang records is the only, we have only this choice to develop some structures around tuples, so records tuples is, is the same. And uh, uh, I want to say that, uh, that most guys who are doing web think that Clojure is the best uh, solution for creating the applications, uh, and uh, why? Uh, why so? Because uh, Clojure Web Stack is highly com uh, composable and uh, detachable. Each layers uh, you could you could uh, easily replace with uh, your favorite one and uh, construct your framework with these components. Uh, for example, ring is uh, something that we that we have in Erlang called simple bridge. It uh, connects the requests uh, and abstracts the web servers infrastructure. Uh, hiccup, closure script, and OM. OM is a binding for the uh, React JS library that you you you're creating the web page in uh, in Lisp, and this page is being rendered to. To Java, uh, to React JS, uh, Hiccup is also the DOM uh, marking language, and HTTP Kit is the fastest web server that uh, uh, that is so fast as Cowboy. I will show you later the, uh, some benchmarks. Uh, of course, this is uh, this is run on uh, on GVM and uh, la la Laser and on Life. Uh, this is a temp uh, these are templates uh, libraries. So we have this kind of stack, and what uh, my my aim was to bring uh, in that direction the nitrogen framework, and uh, I had a lot of uh, to do to do that because we need uh, to uh, the most cha most challenging task was to create a JavaScript compiler for uh, for the transformation from Erlang to to JavaScript uh, to beat. For example, the closure script because uh, closure guys has closure script and they could easily create the single page application using the uh, the Lisp. So we also want to create a, a JavaScript application using the Erlang. Uh, from the beginning, I was I discovered the all all the web servers that exist in functional languages. Also, I measured the C-like uh, uh, concurrent lang languages like D, Go, Rust. So, and uh, I discovered that uh, only Haskell, Java, HTTP Kit, and Erlang Cowboy provides uh, really, uh, uh, really fast and with high capacity uh, Abilities, web servers, all other language are not uh, are not comparable to talk of boy uh, HTTP kit or you know that HTTP kit is built on top of Dio, which is uh, using uh, very uh, very old uh, concurrent queues of, of Java. So so do for example the f sharp uh, fastest web servers built also using that similar technologies in, in .net and uh, it was it, this benchmark was made uh, far ago so go uh, didn't show a good performance uh, these these three guys here cowboy is uh, still the king so you you could is rely on Cowboy web server. It's really fast. So this is example I want to show about what what exists before before we start. 
uh, we had uh, uh, Elixir Weber web framework, which is uh, kind of Ruby on Rails like uh, web framework uh, in uh, in Erlang uh, infrastructure using Elixir language. Uh, it has also EX uh, template uh, engine. <coughs> Uh, you can use macros, Elixir macros, to unleash the power of, of the language to create your, but uh, it's not very powerful. It's, this framework is basically the, uh, uh, the API to the cowboy, nothing, nothing else. So do the Chicago box. Chicago box use, uses, uh, it's, uh, it has some additional packs like uh, boss DB access to the databases. Uh, it has boss MQ, uh, MQ library, and it also Ruby on Rails like. So you 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 develop the pages using uh, using the similar to Ruby on Rails uh, approach. Uh, it uh, we we also took the detail and giant Django templates library from that framework because it's very known and it's uh, it's good. It compiles. Uh, and we had a nitrogen. So we, uh, our first site was built uh, using nitrogen, but uh, we weren't happy with, with it because it was too slow. Uh, it uh, relies on uh, an approach uh, registry, uh, and this uh, registry process registry was creating the processes on the cluster and. Uh, for example, when you are deducing one server of the cluster, you you feel the, this deduce on all the clusters. So uh, I removed totally this server. I reduced the number of uh, processes crea created during the requests. Uh, now uh, N2O uh, works in the context only of, of the cowboy processes. So no uh, other processes are being spawned. And uh, in that way, we increase the, the capacity. Also, we remove the simple bridge because simple bridge is not needed. Uh, uh, we, are, we, we don't have an option in Erlang world because Cowboy is the fastest, and I don't think uh, anyone will choose another web, web server. It's, uh, you, of course, you have an ability to choose uh, Mochi Web or Misultin or. Uh, or write your own, but uh, we built our websites with Cowboy, so we don't need it. We we put a simple switch uh, uh, to 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 redirect the uh, to to Cowboy API, and so we don't we don't have a bridge. Also, with that, we reduced the the time the latency of, of the requests. So we added, we instead of uh, NPROC registry, we uh, using GProds for pops up interconnection between uh, users and creating the mesh or some topology of your, uh, of your sessions. We also uh, remove all, uh, all list operations that was in nitrogen, so all uh, page construction or rendering is using uh, binaries. It uh, also adds us some some speed. Also, we uh, fully relies on WebSockets channel <laughs> using the the bullet uh, library. We could uh, uh, fall back to XML HTTP request when WebSocket is not available on your web browser. Also, we uh, beyond this topic, we also have a database. That is the database library that allows you to have a uniform access to React, to Manesia, to CouchDB, and to Kai. This is Japanese uh, uh, Amazon Dynamo implementation. Uh, if you are interested in our database that we are using with uh, N2O, you could easily found, find it in, in GitHub in our, all our st over our cloud stack. Uh, that and to belongs to are open and you could easily uh, see it on, on GitHub with examples. We have a lot of examples. So uh, what, is the what is the layers of n So we have a routing layer which uh, uh, deals with a request and uh, redirects your request <laughs> to some uh, Erlang module or even you could uh, invite your own way to redirect the requests. 
uh, we have a query, query, query parser, which means how, how you understand and how you deal with, with, the, with the string of the requests. Uh, we have, uh, we, have, we switched from the process uh, dictionaries to the ETS tables, which is much, much faster, and we also receive some, we gain some speed from, from, from it. Uh, we we are using uh, detailed templates, uh, which is cached and also it's uh, at some speeds. Uh, we f act basically we are fully rewrote the nitrogen, so no uh, no no we it is only nitrogen like and nitrogen compatible. So if you have sites. Uh, uh, which run on top of nitrogen, you could, with uh, little changes, uh, transfer your sites to N2O easily because we have uh, the API is very similar, but you need to change your code. It's not like it's fully compatible, it's uh, like compatible. Uh, we have the same uh, philosophy of elements and actions, so you would be easy to transfer your existing nitrogen sites to N2O. But uh, this presentation is dedicated to something more. And uh, starting from that point, I will show you uh, how we extend the nitrogen. So uh, this is some benchmark benchmarks about the layers. So in compared to, for example, for PHP 5 fast guy, we simple uh, string uh, that uh, draws uh, renders uh, some variable. You have, for example, uh, 5,000 uh, uh, TCP connections. Uh, nitrogen is too bad to even beat the PHP. <laughs> we, of course, talking about the Erlang is very, very fast, but in reality, is this this was very bad. So uh, you see these numbers. For example, with enabled. Uh, uh, DSL rendering of the pages with det applying, applying detail uh, templates, you could gain the seven, uh, it means each layers are enabled, you could gain the seven X uh, uh, times faster than nitrogen. But if you, if, if, if you, for example, not need the DSL rendering, for example, if you are using static, uh, static uh, HTML and JavaScript uh, single page applications for connect to web sockets, so you could even gain the 13,000 uh, TCP connections per uh, per some some configuration. In, for for comparing, I, I I show that on same machine, uh, raw nginx uh, nginx performs 60,000 uh, TCP connections, and raw cowboy on same machine performs twice twice slower. Statica. Uh, it was very hard to measure all these numbers because uh, uh, each uh, tool that we have, uh, is, uh, it behaves in different way. For example, uh, we are work tool uh, doesn't perform the DNS lookups, so it's a really stressful uh, benchmarking tool to, to measure your sites. Uh, for example, Apache benchmark and Hewlett Packard benchmark or CH is they uh, doesn't perform such big stress. So uh, these numbers are very relative. We don't uh, always understand what what this number means. We could, uh, of course, we could measure the uh, the latency. We should measure the error co uh, error uh, hand, how much errors appeared during the your benchmark or, and of course we should <laughs> measure the rate uh, this is another topic uh, it should be described completely uh, it's very deep <laughs> it's not it's not like you just uh, a couple of times run the benchmark and receive these numbers uh, i spent one month to 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 find a tool to to measure that uh, that graphics, how when when it goes slow down. Uh, so when I received these numbers, I started to uh, to think could I, could we drop out something to make it even more fa more faster. So 
I decided to, to defer the JavaScript rendering. For example, when you are hitting the page, you, we will draw you a, a HTML page. And now uh, your web page uh, establishes the WebSocket connection to another web endpoint. Uh, this endpoint creates on the server the WebSocket process. This WebSocket process should, uh, should push to the client the, the JavaScript uh, events, bind these events to the, to the DOM elements. And uh, we don't need to to render this uh, JavaScript uh, uh, JavaScript functions at the, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of the displaying the page. So we defer this loading and we receive the numbers twice bigger than uh, than they were. But we also move further and we completely uh, uh, push the HTML rendering outside the our web, web framework. So from now on, you are not, you, you don't necessarily need to render your HTML. You basically, you need to render your HTML from the Erlang uh, records, but only once. So in this way, it's, uh, this framework could also behave like a static rendering engine. For example, you, you're creating your web page, but you only need to render once and push this result of this rendering to the file to the disk and serve in future this file with Nginx. So it means uh, we, <laughs> we completely moved the HTML rendering outside <laughs> the web, web framework. And this web framework now only serves the WebSocket connections. And, uh, and this is open as an ability to create a real single page applications using, using this Erlang web framework. So uh, you see that uh, in Nitrogen and the first version of N2O, you, you, you needed to, to render the, the uh, HTML page. Now you don't need it. You just need to, to connect to WebSocket. So the basic idea how it influenced in the, in, into the architecture of the framework. Because you don't now need to render the HTML, pay, HTML elements, you should only specify the elements on the page which has JavaScript, which has uh, some postbacks. If it has postback, you could specify it, but also you could say that I don't need to render the HTML, I need to render only JavaScript. <laughs> This is the example of, uh, of the nitrogen uh, rendering results, which consist of the part of the HTML and the event, JavaScript event that is sent from WebSockets to the client, from the WebSocket process to the client. You see the, this is a binding on the click for, for a button. So this is a result of the rendering of that DSL, Erlang DSL. So uh, this, uh, this function uh, collect the data from the text boxes, packed it uh, with BERT to binary message and sent. We could also, you could easily replace the BERT with message pack or JSON or whatever you want. So it's not, uh, it's not necessary the BERT. Uh, so the DSL approach is like uh, you create the application like you create a desktop application. So you have a set of control elements this control elements has uh, some events, event handlers. Uh, these event handlers are presented as rendered JavaScript, and it, the elements itself is encoded with HTML. So, but you don't need to deal with HTML or JavaScript. You are using only Erlang language to create your applications. It's exactly the same how you use desktop applications, how you create desktop applications with Cocoa, with uh, Win, uh, Windows API, or Something like that. Even, <laughs> even we could use the uh, Erlang language DSL to create a desktop application. For example, we could use Erlang language and create a co and render the Cocoa uh, source code. But it's beyond also this topic. Uh, we have we uh, before. Uh, we started a JavaScript compiler, you, uh, you know that when you are creating uh, web applications, you, and of course, even with uh, uh, web, web server rendered 
web frameworks, you need to inject the raw JavaScript strings to, <laughs> to your messages to update some elements or do some tricks that allows you to, uh, to have a dynamic HTML modifying or something like that. Uh, and of course, no one's like that. Everyone comes and say, oh, you have, you have a JavaScript injection, so oh, this is bad. <laughs> uh, so we decided to completely avoid and remove all JavaScript injections. For that purpose, uh, we started to implement uh, JavaScript compiler. Uh, and uh, now I want to tell you some words about the, the theory of, uh, of compiling from one language to another language. This is also a kind of a macro or DSL problem. And uh, in Erlang, we have uh, parse transforms for that purpose. So you, uh, you could transform your Erlang AST tree with some functions to the JavaScript. This, this task was very simple. Why? Because uh, both the JavaScript and Erlang has the same power, uh, power uh, same, same domain. This is untyped lambda, and you could easily transform from one syntax to another uh, with uh, semantic preservation. What we mean semantic preservation, it means when you are transforming your your, your, your source code program, you preserves the names of the variables, the name, the closures, the case statements, all language elements. Uh, it, was our, it was our requirements for, for that compiler. Uh, if we, we will think uh, more widely on that problem, so we discovered all, all existing solution on the market, e each languages. And uh, we, we want what, what we want from that compiler. We want that compiler to be human readable output. It means it shouldn't produce the robotized co code base. It should uh, produce the, uh, the clean and understandable code to work with in future for, for, for JavaScript developers to extend it. It uh, should not uh, produce the code which just need uh, some run times. For example, most of, uh, most of uh, JavaScript compilers produce the code which is need to be plugged with some runtime. It's some JavaScript library that uh, acts like a, uh, like a small virtual machine or small runtime. Uh, we, we should <coughs> consider to use uh, this is a strong dynamic typing language, which is Erlang is. So, and uh, this language should be, uh, should be compact like Erlang. It should not uh, uh, have a big description or language specification. Erlang is, is best fit for, for that. It's simplest language I, <laughs> I work with. So, uh, you see the numbers which, uh, which compiler uh, corresponds to our requirements. And, uh, we created a compiler that uh, corresponds all these requirements, and uh, it most uh, most uh, uh, it has m most coverage to that requirements among other uh, JavaScript compilers. Only uh, one JavaScript compiler with the same power is the JScala project. You could also find it on the internet with Tetris. Uh, you, the Tetris game written in Scala, which compiles to JavaScript and runs in the browser. Why we need such a thing like compile the Erlang programs to JavaScript? For example, if you are using, uh, if you are creating uh, business applications, for example, you're creating a forms or after generated forms, you need to uh, plug some. Uh, validation rules or some business rules. And uh, you need to, these rules to be checked twice on the web forums and on the server. So this is a very good uh, uh, choice for that. You also, when you are creating or, or prototyping some applications, you don't need to hire a JavaScript developer. You could do some work with yourself very, uh, 
uh, when you, you are, for example, creating some sketch of the uh, application sum. So one, uh, one, pro one programmer could do all the work by himself and don't need to, to hire another <laughs> person. In future, you could easily extend this, but for, for, uh, for time to market, you need to create your application very fast. For that purposes, you also could use Erlang to create your applications fully in one, uh, in one language. And for, of course, single environment. This is uh, technically, uh, technically perfect solution for, for, the, for, for the single uh, ecosystem. And this is an example. This is a program that renders on the server and creates a HTML uh, elements with uh, uh, using the React JS uh, semantic. So this program in Erlang, uh, if you turn this to uh, uh, to using uh, JavaScript compiler, this transforms to such a clean JavaScript. You see all uh, React uh, Erlang records elements transforms to React create class functions. And all DOM elements, we are not using the, here a uh, JS6 uh, transformation. We are using the React. So this is a minimal, minimal React JS distribution without the JS6. Uh, the DOM elements of React. Uh, and uh, these uh, elements is compatible with nitrogen elements. But this is another approach to render and to create your views. <laughs> if you are familiar with React.js, you could use this immediately. But you could also use the Erlang to JavaScript compiler for your own uh, JavaScript library. So this is just, just an example of uh, applying the JavaScript uh, compiler to the React.js, which is very, very, very famous, and uh, it, uh, the popularity of React.js grows. So what we basically done here, we, uh, as soon as Erlang to JavaScript compiler is based on the Erlang AST tree, it means that you could compile also Elixir programs to JavaScript using our Erlang to JavaScript compiler. But also we have an example to, uh, to create a JavaScript program from the uh, Joxa uh, Lisp uh, on top of Beam language. But for that purpose, we need to modify the Joxa because Joxa originally uh, using uh, Erlang core uh, for uh, for producing the code, but we need to producing uh, from uh, to producing the Erlang AST from the Lisp. So we modified the Joxa. It calls Brace, and uh, we started the project. We want to rewrite the Joxa Lisp language, uh, which would be much faster and much cleaner. <laughs> uh, you could follow us. So this compiler is is ready for using with any Erlang language with compiled Erlang AST. So Elixir is okay. So let's return to, to nitrogen model. So this is a, an example of the page. You, uh, you have the control elements. These control elements are being put into the some, uh, some template file, for example, detail. And uh, here we have eventing system for, uh, for reactions of the actions. So this is an example of using N2O from Elixir. You could easily, uh, use, you could easily write your applications using Elixir language with N2O. So we have a bindings. You could just uh, use uh, some examples and write your <coughs> applications using Elixir. Also, we have such, such examples in Joha language. So you see, uh, you maybe you don't see, but you will uh, you will find it in presentation. This is basically the same things uh, as records. So we we using the records in motion in both languages because it's Erlang based languages. So you could we let's uh, this is another topic about the REST REST uh, abilities. Uh, we have uh, you know that you when you are building a REST applications. You need in Erlang to transform the 
the JSON string uh, presentation of the of the message to to the property list. Now I predict a lot of uh, libraries that will uh, transform the string-based JSON to maps because Erlang now has maps, so everyone would use that instead of property lists. But uh, originally, Erlang uh, is, uh, uh, is designed to use records. So in any case, we're using records for storing records into Manasia, onto, into databases, and uh, it's uh, very easy to use records in matches. Is uh, It must... it. Uh, uh, stores in ETS tables, in that table. So records uh, are primary format of storing the data. Uh, property list and maps is only a buffer, buffer format. Uh, you see where we have a YAVS uh, JSON decoder from uh, property list to JSON strings and to C implementation. As you see, JSON X is much faster than Jiffy. So if you are using uh, uh, Jiffy, you should switch immediately to JSON X. If you are using, for example, Erlang on Xen, you should use pure Erlang Im implementation of that library. So we are using YAVS because it, <coughs> it, it is much, it is the fastest Erlang implementation of JSON. So uh, you could transform the, uh, as we are using the Erlang records as a native format, so you should, you should transform after you transform from string to property list, you should transform from property list to, to Erlang record. And we have uh, two options here. You could use macros or some functions, or you could use codec generation with, uh, with sparse transformation. Uh, of course, code generation uh, will allow you to do it much faster. So we we provide a parse transform for for REST uh, uh, transformation. It generates two functions, uh, which transform from properties to records. You just need to uh, to specify what record in to what records you want to to transform in that module. So it will generate automatically these functions. So this is an example of, of the uh, uh, kind of <coughs> memcache interface, REST interface to the ETS tables. You know that in Erlang we don't use memcache because Erlang itself holds the uh, ETS uh, data in memory tables uh, very good, so we just need, we, we are using ETS for, for that purposes. And here is an example of ma mapping uh, your REST uh, uh, request to, so this is a complete implementation, so no, no other code is needed there. Uh, you could also, using uh, our uh, KVS database and uh, our REST interface, provides something similar to web machine. You know that React has an ability to access to all tables, all buckets with web machine and you could easily do a link walking. So this is a an, an, uh, kind of implementation of the similar ability using our, our web stack. So with KVS, you also could uh, create uh, the same model, but with you, uh, instead of it's kind of locked to one uh, type of record, but you also could write a similar application uh, to, any, to any bucket or to any record. And uh, uh, everything stays the same. So you are, this is a web socket web framework that allows you to create a different kind of application from REST application to single patch application or classic server side rendering application using your favorite complete engine. Uh, I received some, uh, some positive feedbacks and we have a, a nice group of people who are helping us to develop the n If you want to join our team or you want to help us or you want to, uh, to work on it or use it, 
uh, we have a book written about N2O. We have a lot of documentation. We have a lot of examples. We even have a, a content management system built on top of N2O. So you could easily plug it to your site. It's open source. You could just clone on GitHub and uh, start it. Uh, you, you will have a nice site with, uh, uh, with posts, uh, with uh, tree uh, commands. Uh, with admin panel, with uh, access control lists uh, of users. You, you have uh, a modulus for PayPal payments, uh, social uh, logins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this is kind of very major uh, stuff <laughs> you could rely easily. Don't worry to use and to questions. Yes? Can you do Angular JS? Uh, sorry? Angular JS. Not the JS? Angular. Can you do Angular? Angular? Angular JS. Uh, no, we don't have uh, bindings to the Angular JS because Angular JS uh, is, uh, is a big, uh, is a full, uh, full stack web framework. We encourage our users of N2O to use some uh, smaller. JavaScript backends like React.js. So we encourage our users to use React.js. Yes? So, uh, so Cowboy also uses the same, um, like one, one process for the kind of thing. So what is the like, fundamental difference uh, compared to the Cowboy architecture? Uh, compared to one process per, per connection, compared to? So Cowboy also. Cowboy? Yes, it's, we totally work inside Cowboy process in context of Cowboy process, so we don't spawn anything. You could spawn additional processes using the, as, as, uh, like Comet or Async uh, <coughs> processes to create your topology of, uh, of subscriptions. Uh, but this is, uh, this usually it's needed only for group chats, like uh, for some lobbies in games. So you have an ability, it's included in, it's, it, it was included in nitrogen and it's still used in, in tool.